Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, today is going to be a little special. One of my talented colleagues, James, um, we call him the Geminator, he invited us to a session hosted by the kind contributors for this library, Strawberry. So it's this event <clears throat> over here. So the creator of Strawberry, Patrick, open up a sprint with the goal of improving the libraries, onboarding new contributors like me and uh, having fun in general. So um, it's currently running at the moment. It's now 7 p.m. in Singapore and that's about 11 a.m. here. And today we will be contributing to Strawberry. So as context, Strawberry is a very popular library, um, one of the more promising um, Python libraries for GraphQL integrations. So there are many talented software engineers who have been contributing to this. And for us, we use this library as a very, uh, as a very powerful GraphQL library to make API servers self-documenting in Python. So today I'll be videoing myself um, doing this and yeah, it's going to be fun. And the objective for this video is to show the raw experience of how it's like to start off as a contributor to such a library. So I, I've heard great things about Patrick um, fr from my colleague James, who's a core contributor in Strawberry. So hopefully it's fun. And I hope that this would be a fun uh, webcast of me doing my best to contribute to this library. So I guess a good start is to understand the tasks. So like, uh, right now, um, James has recommended a task for me, and that is to, let's take a look at the mentions there. See new unread. Let's go stuff. Here, where was the good first issue again? So like this, so like um, typically to start contributing, the first thing we will do is to read this um, readme that the software engineers have prepared. And there's a few ways to contribute. The first way is to report bugs. There's also suggesting enhancements and they also guide us on how we can set up the strawberry repository locally. So typically we will, we will be fork, uh, my guess is that we will be forking this repository and we'll be able to make changes to that. So let me just fork this, uh, strawberry, and let's copy the main branch. Okay, so now we have this and there we go. So now let's, try forking this one okay i have cloned the repository but i don't think i should have done that before so let me just close let's go to ship it parrot and let's clone this repository here so let's remove the old strawberry repository okay clone this Hmm, in the meantime, let's go to the channel and let's check out the chat. Okay, um, I guess there's nothing much happening in the general channel for now. Uh, let's go to development. Uh, where is so let's let's find Hayes because I think Hayes sent me a list actually let's find James uh crap where's the text that uh 
we will take a look at just now. Uh, okay, let's go to where else? It'd be nice if um, it'd be nice if we have somewhere to start. Yeah, I'm looking for a specific track that I was tagged in and James was really nice um, to tag me on one of the recommended issues that we can take a look at so um, Let's see, where else? Mm, there we are, Sprints. Uh, I was looking for this channel, but I forgot exactly where I, uh, where I left it. Okay, there we are. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so it's this thread over here. Um, okay, so how enums work with Pydantic conversions? Okay, so... Interesting. So currently... The way we the way we use enums is by registering them. So strawberry enums. Let's try to understand the context of the problem first. So let's try to understand enums. So enums are a way to restrict. Um, it, it's a type typically for strings. Um, to restrict, to restrict our users to a, sp a particular set of values. So for example, if we have a few options of ice cream ready and we want users to choose only from these, app, these options, Strawberry supports defining enums using the Python standard library. So this is standard, like this is not part of Python, but Python allows us to define classes like this. And we can make this class inherit from enum over here. And we can define like attributes under this enum. And each of these attributes would be taken as a possible variation of this so it currently in uh, strawberry after you define the enum we have to register our class as a strawberry type so they have created a class decorator so something like this and just by wrapping it like this um, we can use this class as one of the data models in graphql so over here you will define a query schema and just like this, like you can use this ice cream flavor type inside your field now. Yep. So that's pretty much the context of what enums are and how we currently use that in Strawberry. So in, in summary, before GraphQL can use that enum, we have to register that data model as a, as a type, like a GraphQL Strawberry type. So we use this. Now my next question in my mind is what 
is what are some problems or I guess some pain points of using this like in my experience they look it sings pretty well like it's pretty it's abstracted pretty well so I don't really felt I don't really see the need to change anything for now as a user so let's take a look how enums work with pydentic conversions add a section on the pydentic docs that you need to register to resolve it yourself and an example an error happens how to fix it okay so this is to add a section on pydentic docs that you need to resolve the enum yourself and an example of what or when the error happens and how to fix it so currently we raise strawberry not a strawberry enum not a strawberry enum error and a helpful way to resolve it, but it seems people are still getting confused about it. Okay. Hmm, let's take a look at this. Uh, enum types from Pydentic models are not registered in GraphQL schema. What? Okay. If a Pydentic model contains enum, this field, this enum definition is not registered in GraphQL schema. Okay, so you are defining a Pydentic model and you are putting it as an attribute under a Pydentic model. And now they they use the Pydentic type to the class wrapper to create a corresponding strawberry model. Yes, and this will fail because we need to register the enum like GraphQL, like this decorator over here does not automatically convert this enum to a strawberry data model so that's why it gets this so okay this is a pretty mm, okay yes yeah, so james was helping out with this like back in april 25th 2022 Okay, um Yep, so Melinas reported this and Sue Hotdog confirmed that by registering the strawberry enum this works. Okay, uh <laughs> okay, uh, I guess it's not clear that um, we need to register the enum. So that's why James is asking to add a section on the Pydentic documents that we need to resolve the enum yourself. Okay, so let's do that. So let's open this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pagination guides errors not a strawberry enum. So the title is thrown when trying to use an enum that's not a strawberry enum to show this error. Yeah, looks like they have already added this actually. When was this added? So this was added by Aminio. 
back in May okay so yes this is um, this is not registered as an enum Ah, looks like it's already registered though so it's a pretty clear example Looks like it's already done actually. So that's this guy, Aminio, who has already added these docs here. So it's on the guys, I think. Uh, no, it's not on the guys, it's on the errors. And uh, now the strawberry enum. Hmm. Yeah, but just for the sake of um, this exercise, I think it's pretty good for our viewers if I demonstrate exactly how this error is happening. So let's create a new project and let's call this um, replicating strawberry errors. And over here, let's create a very simple boilerplate. So let's first um, import flask and strawberry. So let's um, create a readme MD, a replicating a strawberry in um, not a strawberry in um, error. We will be. It's a common issue to. Uh, it's a common issue to. Uh, when we are using the strawberry GraphQL library, it's a common error to encounter not a strawberry enum error. This repository um, spins up, uh, contains a lean flask application using strawberry. We will be a graph, a popular Python GraphQL library. Okay, so um, we will be creating will be creating an enum uh, a python vanilla enum and we to and purposely not uh, create the corresponding graphql strawberry graphql um, enum this will replicate the this will replicate the sh not a strawberry enum error and demonstrate how we can fix it
by creating a corresponding strawberry graph here in app. Okay, so just like this, let's create a simple requirements.txt file and let's do let's install flask and let's install strawberry. We also need pydentic as well as a validation library and let's create a very quick virtual environment. So hmm, let's go okay, virtual env. Okay, just deactivate this shit. Okay, um oh we already have the virtual environment here actually. Let's just set it up. Okay, uh yeah, looks like it's already created. So let's activate this virtual environment and let's install our requirements.txt. Okay, ooh. Multiple top level discovered in a flat layout. Mm. Interesting. Why? So pip tree install strawberry. Okay. Hmm. Why is this the case? Interesting. Let's move the strawberry. I'm not sure whether it's because my local strawberry repository is interfering with that. I wouldn't have guessed that's the case actually. But let's just move it out. Okay. Yeah, let's just move this. Okay, let's go back to strawberry errors. This install strawberry. Yeah, it looks like it's fine. Setup.py egg multiple top level packages discovered in the flat layout. Okay, let's just do some quick googling to understand what error is this. Okay. 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 Let's try following this by warm dasher. Pi project tomo. Okay, and let's do pi modules equals to this. Let's try again. Nope. Pip tree install strawberry. So install strawberry. Let's get up. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I guess I'll just try this and see if this installation works. Okay, it works. So we have Hmm. Okay. Oh, I guess I I guess I was using the wrong. Okay, I was I guess I was using the wrong um, installation command. Perhaps this should be strawberry GraphQL. Okay, so let's yeah let's um pit tree flask grab pit tree freeze grab flask to get the version of flask here and let's just install flask okay 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 so we are using 2.2.3 short paragraph ql equals to 0.157.0 and now let's install pydentic so Pydentic is a data validation model and it's very popular among Python developers to create data classes that has validation logic in there. So now we have Flask. Let's create the Flask object. So um, 
app equals to flask.flask okay app flask.flask okay and now the next thing is to register this um is to register this flask app with uh app dot set you thing url at url rule okay so this would be uh queries query and let's create a very simple view function and spin that up so app.run we will run this on host uh, see port equals to 5000 and let's create a very simple schema so strawberry schema and this is the entry point like pretty much the entry point so let's create a query um, strawberry schema let's um, import this and let's first define a very simple resolve hello hello world actually let's call this hello world and this endpoint over here would be exposed will be exposed um, So let's do query uh, what's that? Let's see. Let's take a look of the schema. Okay, I don't remember the exact function that's used to register this as a view. So let's quickly take a look at the strawberry quick start strawberry documentations and let's take a look at how we can quickly create a strawberry resolver okay so exactly like this Actually, yeah interesting we can just uh, decorate the query class with the class decorator strawberry type as well Okay, so we were supposed to create a schema first and provide this as a... Oh, okay, so I guess I got it wrong. Actually, the query here should be... This should be a strawberry type. So let's register this as a strawberry type instead. And now let's create a schema. So we have a query here. Let's create a schema. Our schema. Okay, strawberry schema. And how do we do this? Like... Um, schema equals to strawberry schema query okay so i guess i have to put it at the top so that it recognizes it and this schema will be ready for you so now next step is how do we register this schema as part of a flask application so flask with strawberry schema let's take a look exactly like this nice so view function equals to graphql view dot s view and we okay nice that's exactly what we want to do in our main method over here so let's define the view function so this would be actually let's just call this graphql i don't think we need the endpoint over here and view function is equals to graphql view This should be a class under the Pydantic library. Strawberry flask views. Yep, this one. And this is a class that has a helper method called sView, if I'm not mistaken. So it seems to be under the base URL class. Oh, okay, it's under the view class, which is, I guess. Yes, so. <laughs> GraphQL view inherits base URL view, and base URL view inherits view, and view has a S view method over here. And this S view method over here converts the class into a view function that can be registered as a route. So this is probably an alias for a callable. Okay, nice. Exactly. So a callable is a type for functions. So pretty much it. And um, yeah, GraphQL view. The name, I guess this is the name, and I'm assuming that the name can be any name that you like. Next thing is to provide the schema, which is which we define inside the strawberry schema. So let's import that. 
from Strawberry Schema. And now we have a simple Flask application that has one single um, resolver method. So let's try hitting that and better understand this problem. So let's do Python 3 main.py. And this is going to, oh, invalid schema. Okay, so is it because I, uh, okay, so what, why did this fail? Let me see. Oh yes, of course, I forgot to decorate this as a strawberry field, I guess. And this registers the resolver method, like the method which is which will be called when users hit the hello world endpoint. So now this is running on our port 5000. Now let's um, create a simple request collection. Let's call this strawberry. And let's create an endpoint. Let's call this HTTP. Um, localhost at 5000 and let's switch to GraphQL query and show the schema. So let's refresh the schema. Um, let's expose it at query. Okay, and there we go. We You can see that with Strawberry, it's really nice. It's very user-friendly for developers if they wish to make their endpoints readily uh, self-documenting to to our front-end developers. So let's define a query, hello world, and um, this is going to be calling the hello world endpoint. And uh, in this case, it's just going to return back, uh, okay, query hello world, hello world. And this will be returning back a string, I guess, like there's nothing much going around here. So hello world, just like this. Okay, so I don't think there's any fields here, so I'm just going to call it like this and let's see if it hits. Ah, nice, so there we go, we have a hello world over here. At this point, we are successful in bringing up a very simple boilerplate that can bring up a schema. So now, let's source control this shit, okay, uh, git init, and now let's um, add this uh, git commit dash m okay, add simple documentation to spin up a shell Flask application. Okay, so we have created the Flask application and we can see how we can create a very simple schema. So at this point, the next step will be to create um, an inner model and make this field try to return it back. So let's create a very simple models. Let's create a pydentic file. Let's call this... Uh, um, let's, uh, for the sake of this example, let's define a strawberry. So, uh, strawberry, strawberry, uh, strawberry, I guess. And, uh, this is, uh, my strawberry. And this is a pydentic model. Let's make this a base model. And let's say this my strawberry has a few attributes the first is the name of course and maybe it has some uh, maybe it has a country you know and let's just make this a string for now so uh source country let's say source country so uh where do strawberries come from uh where do strawberries go so ooh, did someone uh okay uh now we have strawberry. Now let's try making our endpoint return back strawberries. Uh, get strawberries. And let's say this gives back a very simple my strawberry. Yep, so let's just return this strawberry and let's just say that, uh, okay, so we have the strawberry here. 
this is a very simple uh actually let's call this uh yeah let's rename this as pydentic models so that it's clear pydentic models and this schema can't just return this schema can't just return the pydentic model right away because strawberry doesn't understand that this model is inside is is available as a type so if so just to validate that like i'm just going to return uh, a very simple strawberry yeah so we got a, my strawberry here and and my hypothesis here is that this will crash and burn because we are returning back a type a data class that is not registered as a strawberry type and if it's not registered as a strawberry type, GraphQL will know how to display it on the client, like to, to the client in the schema. So you can see that over here we get um, type error, query fields can't can resolve unexpected type my strawberry. So to resolve this, we need to create a strawberry type. Okay, so there we go. So I will just add this in as a commit. Err, uh, uh, this is not allowed. We can't make our fields, our strawberry fields, return a uh, my uh, pydentic uh, non strawberry model. Okay, so there we go. Let's um, add strawberry mod, add a pydentic model and replicate uh, an unexpected type error. Okay, so this is a stage where we can't. Uh, okay, so I haven't pushed it yet, it's okay. So to fix this, we will need to create a strawberry model. So, uh, sorry, create a directory and uh, let's create a copy of the same my strawberry but make it a strawberry type so let's call this uh, my my uh, graphql models i should just call this my pydentic strawberry and i guess this should be my <laughs> strawberry strawberry okay this is a i should have not used strawberries as an example but okay my uh straw my graph ql strawberry i guess so now we can make this uh we can register a strawberry type and this strawberry type this um, wrapper function allows us to specify a class and over here this will be my strawberry and if we pass in the class like this this type function decorator over here will be smart to notice that um, oh you want to create a strawberry data model from this given pydentic class so now we will have to uh, i guess all fields equals true i think all fields equals to true yeah so this all fields parameter here specifies that we want this strawberry model to inherit all fields from my strawberry so now that we have this let's fix our schema by making this return my graphql strawberry so just like this so um you might have a uh pydentic strawberry uh my strawberry and at this point you might be asking yourself how do we convert this my strawberry into a strawberry into a uh my graphql strawberry so it turns out that um the very talented software engineers they came up with a uh, from pydentic helper method here, which will be available um, as long as you wrap this into a strawberry type and you specify the few the cloud the pydentic uh, model that it inherits from. You can 
construct that strawberry model by just using this from pydentic thing here. So convert pydentic model into a strawberry model. Now, my hypothesis is that this will work. So let's quickly spin this up again. And now we will see, oh, is it all fields though? Um, let's quickly take a look at the documentation in case um, I got it wrong. So name description. Okay, uh, let's see. Queries. Resolvers. Hmm. Okay. Uh, huh. How do we register the? Okay. I guess. I guess I will just remove this. And see. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I don't see any all in of, uh, all views here. Okay, I guess that's not necessary. Okay, let's try again and let's see if this works. So now we read this. Oh, init does not take in. Takes one position arguments, but two were given. Yes, exactly. Because of this thing over here, I think. Uh, init takes in one, two. Strawberry base model, okay, looks fine. Name, goes to name, and source country, goes to this, let's try again. Okay, so we are getting an error here. Where is this? Okay, line seven. It's not detecting the type, I guess. How do we use the strawberry type? Strawberry type. Okay, let's see. Ah, oh, I guess, is it a different? Ah, okay, I was using the wrong wrapper, I guess. I was supposed to use I was supposed to use this experimental model. Yes, so this will be my strawberries and all if you supposed to true. Nice. So now let's spin this up again. And now if we hit this endpoint, sorry, let's change this to get strawberries. Uh get uh let's take a look at this. Get strawberries. We will be able to specify. Let's refresh this again. Okay. So if we go under Pydentic here, we don't see an enum example, I guess. Uh, errors in strawberry. I don't see it here actually. Mm. Yeah, weird. Let me find uh, enum. Mm, yeah, it's, it is here, it's here. But um, the step to register the enum is defined in this documentation, but it's not very clear to our other con come back here again and uh, okay so let's see if we can schema fetched 14 minutes ago wow okay uh, get strawberries okay let's do this again and now we are in GraphQL port 5000 let's refresh this schema schema fetched 15 minutes ago so this is not the
latest schema. So now let's go to let's try source country. Hmm. Let's see. Can't find query. Yeah, for some reason it can't load that schema. Although I see that there are attempts to get this. Okay, let's refresh this. Yeah, weird. We actually cannot click it. We actually cannot um see this here. Huh, okay, let's define another strawberry field. Dummy field info string dummy and let's try spinning up again. Now let's interesting it's not detecting any changes so now let's i'm assuming that maybe this, i did something wrong here so i'm just going to bring this up again and see if we can get the dummy field ah, interesting local host 5000 okay let's try get strawberries and let's make this into a dummy field query Okay, and let's try querying dummy field internal server error. Can't get GraphQL operation type. Interesting. Why would this be the case? Okay, uh, let's. Hmm. Now we have the dummy field, but we can't get graph operation type. Let's call this. Why would you not be able to, man? Let's try again. Okay. Dummy field string, and there we go. Now we get it right. But why is this not working earlier? Interesting. Now let me try and bring it up again. Let's refresh this schema. And interestingly, I only have dummy field. But I don't have get strawberries. Oh, I do. But for some reason, the schema intro... Oh, now it's here. Okay, but anyway, we... <laughs> Um, there was some I, I don't know I think it was take it was taking some time to get the schema but in, in summary we were able to fix the error by registering the model over here so let's add this let's add this new strawberry model strawberry model for for pydentic my strawberry fixes unexpected type Okay, uh, here we go. And now for the exciting part. So let's say you have this my strawberry here and you want to add in an enum. So let's say let's say you have a enum called source country. Right? And let's say there's a couple of countries. Um there's uh, Italy, um there's Korea. And that's Singapore, so United States, and let's say there is uh, France, and let's say there is uh, you know like there's more, there's way more countries out there. There's China, um, Spain, uh, there's Russia, okay, uh, Russia, Mexico, um, Peru. Argentina, Chile, Australia, New Zealand, Ukraine. Yep. Let's say that we want to use this source country here. Um, please. Uh, so, so like, let's say we have a source country here, and let's say we want to make this, let this be returned. So let's go to. 
Let's spin up this application again and let's see if we are able to return the enums. So now we are going to replicate the model, uh, replicate the error over here. Let's call this source country Italy, let's say. And now let's do python3 main.py. And you can see that over here, enums source country is not a strawberry enum. So we get this. Uh, let's go back to my strawberry strawberry. If we don't register the enum, we get this error. Okay, so so your next question might be how do we register this enum so that it is visible in the strawberry schema? So let's go to my strawberry here and let's register that. So let's create a sir, my GraphQL. source country we are registering that model equals to source country and we are going to register this by wrapping it with a strawberry enum so strawberry dot enum like this so hmm, I think there might be a better way to register that here so if we do, if I'm mistaken, that's an experimental way to wrap, to register in a strawberry enum over here. So uh, let's see. Enum. Okay, there we go. Yeah, where's the content type? Registered. Where's the content type? <laughs> Enum registered. Okay. Um, interesting. Okay. Let's come back here and let's try registering this this way. If I'm not mistaken, this doesn't work like this. Like, um, sorry, I was defining this incorrectly, but I don't think this works. So, type of pydentic model oh yes because this is an enum so this is not really a pydentic integration right so let's just do strawberry type and let's make this inherit the source country over here okay that's one way to go about it which is strawberry enum isn't it yes so strawberry enum takes in an enum type okay oh okay it just registers it so i can just Make it do this, and this should register the strawberry enum. Registers the enum in the GraphQL type system. Now let's try spinning up the application again. Okay, so GraphQL strawberry. It's not a valid source country. So source country GraphQL like this. I guess that should work. Okay, let's try it again. GraphQL source country is not a valid source country. Interesting. And where is this being spun up here? Okay, let's try going to enums and see the documentation to see how they register that enum. Okay, let's come here. Okay, this is if we copy the enum. Okay, let's see. 
there must be a better way. From Ms. Taken, there is a documentation that shows exactly how we can register that enum. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I guess that works. Well, this will work if we decorate our enum class with the class decorator and we specify every single value to be a strawberry enum value like this. But I remember that there is a better way to do this. So if I'm mistaken, you can register enums using a certain method. Okay, let's try doing googling register enum strawberry okay uh, mm, yeah it's the same thing here okay so okay i guess i guess let's just try that so let's go to back to our source country here and just decorate it like this mm, not really ideal but Let's try this. Okay. Okay, so this runs. Let's call query. And yep, this fixes it. I guess that's one way to fix it. If you convert your... If you decorate the enum directly. But I, will have exp I think there is a way for us to create a separate strawberry enum without... Um, decorating the the service level enum directly so there must be a way better way but it's okay I guess for the purpose of demonstrating the error this is more than enough so fix registers the enum as a strawberry type by decorating it with the strawberry enum class decorator okay so now we have this we have an enum here register the enum with a add a source country enum and register the source country enum as a strawberry enum strawberry type yep so there we go so now we have, so we got a glimpse of how the error looks like. Okay, um, let's see. Strawberry built in errors for when something goes wrong with creation user usage of schema. Provides a custom handler for improving how errors are printed and makes it easier to find the exception source, for example, for the following code. Okay, um,. yeah okay first thing is how do we get here let's go back to the parent directory and let's see where this is hmm Ah, okay, this is how you would bring up the server using the documentation. And we did all of this already. Oh, this under get started. Nice. Okay, then where's the errors? Docs extension. Ah, where's the... Hmm...
Huh. Okay. Where's the docs? I don't see. Oh. I mean, where's the errors section? Dealing with errors? Oh, there it is. But it's on the guides. Um. Enums? I don't see enums here. so it seems that the documentation is not visible or rather it's not clear okay I guess I have to call I guess I have to ask Patrick like um, how do I make a PR to make it visible on the rocks integration. Hello. Are you just Hello. muted? Uh, are, are you just muted or? Hello. Yeah, we were muted. Oh, don't know if you could you could you hear me or? No, no, no. We can hear you. We actually. Um, I think this is going to be useful. That would be a bit weird. But, um, <laughs> Straight in our face. Yeah, we hey can. there. We Hello. Are seeing the. Um, the schema directives, uh, executable ones, and also the, um, the, the field extensions for, for survey. I don't, I don't know if you remember that, that issue from, for me, John, and Nir. Uh, which one? Uh, it's 2168. 2168, let me take a look. I feel I'm fine. I can send it to you. Or I can share my screen in the Discord. It's maybe helpful. Oh, yeah. Just make sure you mute yourself. So you can see it on my screen now. Message. Yeah. This so we were... really could be useful for 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 my relay implementation. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we were discussing on how to implement that, or we were basically just looking at transforming permissions into directives, and then we the idea was to create a schema or create a field extension that could have permissions, and then to either have public or private field extensions which either get added to the, to the schema or remain private and not transparent to the user of the API. I see. Because this this is very similar to like schema direct direct is direct executable, uh, just with I guess different API, right? Yeah. 
So did you, were you using schema directives for permissions because you, will, you also want them to be shown in the schema? Uh, uh, that also, but the, the main reason is uh, the, the current permissions implementation only allow me to, to check for the, the root value. And sometimes, uh, for example, I'm returning a value that I want to check the permissions on each. So uh, I want to be able to, to check permissions after the, the value has been resolved. The sort of context-based authentication. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would be possible with an extension, right? Because we would have the, now the source. Yeah, uh, yeah. My, 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 sch my uh, schema directive implementation uses uh, an extension. And well, uh, it has a, ba a base implementation there, but uh, I have three ways of checking. It, it has a, a, a base check for test permissions, uh, uh, some, uh, a check for root value and a, and a check for the return value, but yeah. that, that is very jungle specific. But, um, but I think that uh, an, uh, a good way to, to implement a uh, uh, schema directive implementation that has that can be resolved is to uh, to allow to check for all of those because. Uh, even the, uh, our current uh, permission permission check implementation could could use the the default uh, uh, the, the default permission checking if it could allow me to to check for the, the return value. Yeah, so the return value would be basically you call the resolver and then you check on the return value, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, it can be done with this, but if if we do field extension, then we lose the. Actually, we could. I, I'm thinking the the case of you know showing the directive on the schema. But I guess this field extension can also add a directive to the um, to the field. So you could do uh, set like field dot add directive. Like, like what we do here for the arguments, we can also add like a schema directives on the field. I would argue yeah. that. It or explicit to rename these extensions to directives because we already have extensions that run on every field, which are uh, the middleware style extensions. Um, let me see if I can find that. Which just modify this method in the base extension class. So we already have that. And then if we add field extensions, so right now the terminology around extensions is something that is always executed in the certain phases, for example, as a hook, as a startup hook, mm -hmm. or executed on every field. Now, if we add an extension to fields, like the field extension style, it's not actually an extension anymore that is executed on every field, but only on specific fields, mm -hmm. which is more of a directive. So maybe a directive is a, a better name in general for the, for the uh, entire construct. I mean, it's fine for the execution part, but it's not fine for like changing the field mm -hmm. itself. Um, because he also like the, the goal of this is, for example, the pagination is also add additional um, arguments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and like making that directive maybe it might be confusing. Okay. Because you know, you know, at the end you're extending the field, extending the execution, and the intro. Yeah. So yeah, the the the, the directive the arguments usually goes to to the the directive itself and not not the the field. Yeah, but if we decide to separate permissions of the directives from these extensions that also have to wrap the field in some way, um, we would have a lot of duplicated code. So that would be, would be clean either. Um, and we would basically create two ways to do the same thing, one with a field extension and one with a permission, because users could just misuse the field extensions for their own permissions, which is fine, but it's not opinionated. And maybe we should be opinionated in that case. So what I'm thinking, I, we can still keep the permission API that we have now. Mm -hmm. For basic things, oh. um, but like the implementation is based on the um, on the schema, the extensions, I guess. Like if we find that there is a um, the permission class, then we swap the we have the extension for the permission. Mm -hmm. Right. So the, it's just maybe like some sugar on top of what we already have. Let's say. Well. For 
pagination, it makes sense for uppercase. Um, this is this would arguably be a directive as well. Like they have, this, yeah, like, yeah. Um, they have that in the spec as an example for a directive. Yeah, uh, a client. Yeah, I mean, it's this. This forces the client to always use this, this extension, for example. I mean, just then. So, how would we merge extensions with directives to have an optional directive on an extension such as a permissions extension? Um, so you can do here in inside apply. And you can we can still have a uh -huh. directive called I don't know permission, and then if the if we want to show it there, we do uh, field dot direct schema directives dot append the permission directive. Ah, uh, so basically we would create dynamically create a new directive in there. Yeah, the name. it's essential. Mm -hmm. And then we could have an option in the base permissions class. But would we keep the um, would we keep the original permissions um, list in the, in the field in that case in the uh, annotation? For now, yes. It's, okay. Uh, can maybe slowly deprecate it, or we can keep it as a yes, in fact, sure. We just need to really understand a bit if we can make it better. Uh, as I, the permission that we have now that we cannot get the result. Mm -hmm. um, so we would need to change that API, I guess. Which you could, I mean, we could have both, but the, the implementation is based on the field extension. So, like, yeah, um, when we create the resolver, if, if we see, or when we create the field, if we see that, that there is a list of permissions, then we use the permission field extension. And if we see a list of extensions, we also add that to the resolver or wrap the resolver. If we see? If it is a list of uh, general extensions. Yes. So, first of all, we work on field extensions and then we transform the permissions. Mm -hmm. Like two two PRs for that feature. Yes. Yeah. yeah sounds reasonable. And then just um, I was thinking just wrapping the uh, resolver and schema converter. Like this would be our base function. Mm -hmm. um, also the async resolver, and then we would have something like the middleware manager in GraphQL core. Just apply all the extensions in the right order, which is basically just a re reduction of the extensions with yeah. the arguments of the previous <laughs> function. Um, yeah. This is going to make the compilation thing much more complicated, like having mm -hmm. the extensions from right? Yeah. Um, we are not even sure that's a good idea at the moment to have the compilation stuff. Just because of memory requirement and startup time as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because then you have a lot of uh, evil Python code. Yeah. Yeah, number just in time is quite. No, it's not, a, it's not actual compilation. It's just like Python code compilation. Yeah, it's creating a function at runtime. Yeah. Ah, okay. Dynamic. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just so we don't have to, on every request, check check yes. if it has this argument. Then yeah. Yes. And it's going to be a, even more complicated. Just a, just a, a quick cash question. Uh, there are some, some people, uh, there is already someone here, and there are more people come, coming. Uh, which channel should be, they, they go to, to find issues to work on? Or uh, this Prince one. I did create one this morning. There's one called Spring. Ah, this Prince one. Okay. Let me just turn. Você pode entrar no canal do Strawberry, vai ter um canal Sprints. Se quiser, você pode até entrar ali no chat também, mas vai ter um Sprints aqui embaixo. E aí... Vai descendo mais. Ah, tá no Pinto, só ali. And I think it would, it would then make it that much more complicated the compile thing because mm -hmm. the only thing I'm doing right. there. Don't make it make it more Okay. <laughs> there's um, resolver to be mm -hmm. the full signature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. So then we always pass all the arguments for each field. Mm -hmm. Cool. I guess we can stop. This, I don't know. Yeah, one thing we need to talk about is async handling in this case because this is just for synchronous contexts. Um, and usually every extension would have to handle themselves whether the result is async or not. So every extension would have to say, is await baby, and then use that chain. Should we give that to the user to do the await baby, or should we automatically wrap each next call in await baby, which is going to be very much overhead if you have more than one extension? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's annoying. I wonder if you can... Django has that, that same problem uh, mm -hmm. with midwares. It, uh, it, it suggests you to, to check if the, the next 
function is uh, a, an async function and define your own resolver, uh, define your own async resolver in that case. Otherwise, uh, just define, uh, let, let me check that there is an example here, but I don't know if there is a much simpler way to do that. Yeah, that, that's one thing that's going to make things slow. Well, so we need to pre-check in the schema converter if one element of the scale of the chain from resolver to last extension is async, and we would need to make everything async in that context. And we could do that beforehand by wrapping all the extensions, probably. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, at the moment, like, on this next here, mm -hmm. we don't know what it is. Yeah. This I was saying that here in this fetch, the, the example, what, what Django suggests doing. Did you send something into the chat? Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the chat of the of our call. Oh, wait, I have to guess it got a little on this iPad so we can see it right now. Do, do you prefer me? Oh, I'll send it to the Springs chat. Okay. Here. Okay. Let's right, pull it up on my okay, facing support. Which also has that uh, that decorator async uh, sync, uh, sync midor mm -hmm. that tells that the that midor supports both both cases and John can optimize it properly. This is gonna have quite a lot of runtime overhead. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could just yeah. analyze that beforehand and um, add some awaits between synchronous calls during execution. Like just normalize it to yeah. everything being yeah basic. like we before beforehand yeah either, either that or before we compute which one needs a sync result and which one needs an awaitable result i'm actually having the same issue now. Oh, yeah <laughs> it's, 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 it's the same everywhere <laughs> yeah it's so much complexity we, we can also do something like that uh, that the creator that uh, sync and async midware um you can also tell that uh it's ju uh, it just supports the uh uh, sync, sync resolver, or just in a, a sync resolver, and uh, Strawberry can wrap it in OH maybe uh, in case we are running a, a, a sync context and it just supports a, a sync resolver and something like that. I don't know if <laughs> my, my explanation. Yeah, I guess we can start with doing a like proof of concept of the extension, then see what we can do for the for this yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so. because we can. I guess we can. Yeah, look by looking at the building, we can find something. Yeah, in there. Some we have to add a chain of middleware. Oops, the square. The square. That's why I didn't get into arms and coding instead. Um, so if we have some async element in the chain, uh, let me think about that. We maybe so let's say this one is async and this one is async. Mm -hmm. um, we could determine that this one is always async, and we could have a requirement that the extensions are either always async or always async. Um, so we could pre-compute, this one needs an async result, this one needs a sync result, but the order matters in this section. So we would need to preserve the order. We couldn't just run all the async stuff first or all the sync exactly. stuff first. That's what also Nir was doing, so I instead suggested like, we don't do that because it's kind of unpredictable for the user that if we choose to run all the async stuff first, mm -hmm. they're expecting this order, but instead we've run. Uh -huh. And especially for your case with next, it's not yeah. going to fly at all. Yeah, it, it won't pass um won't pass my iPad at all. But I can share my iPad. Well, one second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the 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 order the order is important to be preserved. Can we just do the no 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 Oh I cannot mute it at all. Shit, I can't have the room. Oh, the sound. What, what we, we, we can do is maybe just raise a warning 
in case we are having to to switch contexts when resolving uh, a chain of of uh, let's call it those middlewares. And if we we have uh, an async, then a sync, then another async, then we can raise a warning so the user knows that he probably um, using something that should he should be not be using. Like um, he has three extensions, and one of the two of those are async. He's running a a, a, a async uh, schema, and one of those extensions is sync. So. We raise a warning. Maybe even at uh, when creating the, the scheme itself, we can check for those and and say, well, you probably should replace this this extension by a, in the sync one. Otherwise, you have performance issues. Mm -hmm. I think you might also be worth like, continuing the experimentation with the um, compile stuff. Yeah, because so with DAO you can basically create a I don't know. Compile all the yeah, bigger extension and runs everything, but you oh, know which is sync and async. Yeah, okay. yeah, it might be like uh, not great, but yeah, I get what you mean. Like, so, for like, example, the AST yeah. of each of the <laughs> extension. Uh, the thing, yeah, we know, uh, we know the resolver for the field. Mm -hmm. We know the extent, all the extensions. We know which are async, which are not. We know if the field is async or not. Then we can create. One, I don't know, extension that runs all of them, one after the other. Mm -hmm. um, Feeding in the result of the print. Yeah, so like, yeah, we, you would have one, uh, run one ex extension one, then run a wait extension two because that's a thing. Um, yeah. And then so on. Yeah, yeah that also works. works. Yeah. The alternative, instead of warning, it's like similar effort for us to analyze the. Extensions and if in the extensions you provided there is a presence of an async extension, we make all of your sync extensions async. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. Yeah, like we make extensions ahead of time in an async one. So then we just yeah call. So, so in this case, we would um, when we are going back here, we would grab the next result and then. Um, in some kind of async to sync, yeah. similar to Django fashion. But we would pre compute that during the schema conversion time. time. Because we can analyze which one of the extensions is using async. Uh, this is just being, oh, this is very bad handwriting, which I hope. That's... Yeah. This is that sounds be... good. I, w I would just, uh, I would, uh, even, though, even though we can do that, I would still raise the, the warning because. Uh, some place like uh, Django, if you are not careful, um, you could run into uh, sync choice sync problems. Yeah. Um, so uh, someone using Django should should actually, if they are accessing the the database side extension, they should actually transform that that resolver into a a sync one and use sync choice sync sync choice sync for each. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I guess we can we can start. I think the warning is good anyway because maybe this adds a bit of overhead. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but I don't like the implication yeah. it has the extensions we provide. For example, pagination we would have to have a sync pagination and an async pagination, which is once again duplicated code to some extent. Yeah, um, you should take right on yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's better than having to use await maybe on every extension as a as a requirement. Probably. Why would we need to provide both? Just both resolvers? Or just like two implementations? Yeah, a sync and an asynchronous extension for the Django case. Mm -hmm. we just talked about. I this is one of the, the, the main issues I have on Strawberry version Plus, because I have to support, to support both cases. So all, all of my resolvers are actually sync, and when the, the the next one uh, is, uh, is is awaitable. I have to define a uh, an async resolver and return it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's the mess over there. Yeah, it's not great. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean we cannot replace the next call by just providing the value. And yeah, no, we can't do that because we need to wrap the function. Yeah, I 
I think this is the best option, probably, for now. I don't think raising the warning and yeah. wrapping the exactly. sync goals with async. If one of the extensions is async. Exactly. Yeah. Or one of the extensions is async. Or the is async. Yeah, if there's yeah. sync and async, then mixed use. If there's mixed use, and it becomes async. All yeah. of them. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, it's okay. It's not there. Doesn't sound like an ideal solution, but it, at least that's the job for now, I guess. Without having to do a wait, maybe. Well, or we so could just enforce, since it's a new feature, we could just enforce a hard requirement only use sync extensions on sync resolvers. Um, but that would annoy people who want some extensions um, on simple fields. Which, where it's not worth it to have an async resolver because that will load that overhead again. You're, yeah. you're forced to mix sync and async. Schema. Yeah, no, I think we can start with this. Okay. Um, and then we can make also the benchmark and see yeah. how, it, how it is. Yeah. We, we, we can also do some, some clever assumptions. Uh, I think GraphQL card did something like that. Um, like, uh, if you are, if you are running a, a async, a async schema, uh, you can um, maybe have a flag to assume that every extension is async, so you don't need to, to check if those are awaitable or coroutine functions or not, and the other way around as well. If you are running a async, you assume that everything is known async and don't call await maybe. Mm -hmm. That's what we just talked about with... Uh, sorry, uh, uh, what I want to say, but that's kind of the problem we just had. Um, if we if we assume that, for example, simple field resolvers would all have to be async as well, which is not favorable in performance terms. Yeah, but should... even the extension, like if you want to say, for example, if the current user ID is the same ID as the yeah. object owner ID, for example, that doesn't have to be async. Yeah. Um, true. Uh, also, if there is always like, we cannot do static analysis in every case because. Right now, users can also, from their resolver, return a made available or value. They don't have to return, they don't have to statically stick to the convention. They can also return a available or valid value as a type. Yeah, that's <laughs> 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 not a warning at runtime or like an error. Cannot do this. Uh, yeah, well, I think it's possible currently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we could do it. But... Uh, well, we should just also mention return that. return a coroutine from a sync function. Yeah, exactly. That's how GraphQL Core does it. The, that's the signature of a weightable or value of a weightable or value. Yeah, yeah. So then the await happens outside of the synchronous context. Yeah. 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 So that's the yeah. reason why await yeah. maybe yeah. exists. Yeah. It would be so much more clear cut if you couldn't generate coroutines from sync functions in Python. Yeah. It's also it also exists because you can mix and match. Um, no. Async and sync. Uh, if you're returning a sync value, then you don't have to move away. True. Um, if you're using a sync resolver. Yeah. Yeah, it's always oh. the same. I mean, it's also boring. So this? For now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. Give it a try. I'll take heavy inspiration from the middleware manager from GraphQL Core because it's exactly the same functionality, just without yeah. that the middle of the chain we talked about. Because in GraphQL Core with middlewares, it's currently the case that you just have to make everything async or do away maybe on your own. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Let's just do that. I'll just give it a try, and uh, okay. we can yeah. talk about it later. Yeah, I'll bring you back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you can give you some light. Nice. <laughs> oh, I can see this. <laughs> do, do you have any suggestions, Patrick? For issues. Uh, for issues for, for me? Yeah. Um, Let me think. Uh, no, not really, not at the moment. No, I need to, I need to check what we talked about. Um, yeah, for, for the relay one, I guess we can maybe wait a bit for the field extension. Sure. Um, I mean, I'm probably going to try that. 
the forecast data done again, at least for you know the user API and that the implementation can change. Um, yeah, but don't have any issue at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no problem. I, I will take a look at the, the sprint channel and yeah. I did. Oh, I did open an issue on Survey Jungle yesterday because we found that one to one field doesn't work like a foreign key. Uh, oh yeah, I, I saw that. Uh, mm -hmm. That's that actually solved in Strawberry Jam Plus, so probably that is something that I can already try. Already try, try to forge. Okay. And also, just just to mention, after if the 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 few the field extensions are are implemented, I can probably update my my relay uh, really implementation uh, to usage. Yeah, I don't know how long it's gonna take, but we'll see. Yeah, it would be nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll text you later. Okay. That was pretty interesting. So it seems that they are trying to add in a new feature, specifically allowing users to customize their fields, specifically in a way, for example, if you have fields which you only want to show to authenticated users, how do you customize the this this like resolver field to only show fields that are authenticated so so like this is like a base card if i'm not mistaken where you're able to customize fields as you like and if you have a way to customize fields then you can customize these fields to either be paginated just like this example in api1 so in this case it seems that they created a paginated field and they allow us to wrap fields in the query in the query schema such that you can sh get only results in a specific page so for example in this case we we get a page number i guess stored in this first variable over here and you will get um or i guess this would be like the number of documents you want until this until this number i guess and this allows you to get to call the to call like the function to call like this decorated function and you will be able to get the results and you will return only the first like number of results like this so in summary you're able to customize the field like this and over here like patrick seems to have recommended one approach like this I have I would not have thought of a solution like this so I'm pretty mind blown the second solution is similar in a sense like um, in the first solution we use uh, we use classes we use classes to to like um, decorate this function over here to change its behavior the second way is similar so if we can't use classes then the next thing would be to use function wrappers like this so for this function wrapper it's also calling the decorated function and getting a result and it gets back the first results so um the, the smart pairs out there will notice that doesn't if you are to call this like um if you are if you're going to want to paginate page one page two and page three doesn't that mean that you will end up calling this function multiple times isn't it better perhaps to just call the function once and don't know cache it somewhere so i think that's why like the talented developers were talking something about least recently used cache i don't think it's in this card specifically to be fair to be to, to be to be real frank i don't think i really get the bulk of what they were discussing i think i was missing a lot of prerequisites such as directives if I'm mistaken, GraphQL directives is a way to be change the behavior of stuff. So GraphQL directives. So yeah, decorates a part of schema operation with additional configuration. So you can configure stuff. So I think deprecation, um, deprecation is also is also considered a directive. So yeah, I mean, 
I think I used it somewhere, but I don't I, I don't really recall it. Yeah, so yeah, I think that's why they were discuss. I think Patrick and the rest were discussing about LRU cash and something like that. And to be frank, like after looking through the table, I'm not exactly sure why like um some of these cons are like so. For example, I'm not too sure why is it that what do they mean by type cannot be determined determined statistically st- statically? Like what do you mean here? I-, I guess perhaps it's because we don't really know what is in first over here. Like we don't know what this first is. I mean it's an integer, right? Or do they refer to, or do they mean the arguments here because of this any over here? And if that's the case, then how does this paginated function decorator would be, um, yeah, like, why is this con type cannot be determined statistically not here in this cons here? So, yeah, so it's, yeah. I'm, <laughs> to be frank, I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm missing a lot of prerequisites here, so I can't really contribute like meaningfully to the discussion. But it's um yeah, I mean just from the first one hour I can feel like it's a humbling moment already. So anyway back to where where we were, I think the objective was to um was to like uh ask for ask for tips like how do you update the documentation. So I guess I'll ask on general or something. Or I mean, even here. So let's go to the channel. Let's, uh, actually let's just go to sprints and let's ask that question. Is that uh, we... Is there... A... Objective here is... Um... Yeah, I, I, I don't see it here. So I guess uh, we have a documentation for fixing the enums earlier. So if we go to strawberry GraphQL and we go under here, go on the documentations and errors and um, object is talking enum over here. Like we can't see this, like um, it's not, it's not really visible on the documentation here, right? I guess. So where's the enum? The enums here. The enums do show do do hint to users that we need to register the enums. But uh, since we have uh, since we do have this issue, I think there was an issue. Um, Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah, it's not really clear, I guess, since... Okay, but this was resolved in 2022, so I guess I'll reply. Cat Turner. Hi, Cat Turner. Hi, we, we have a document. We can fix it. It's by manually registering the enum or create a strawberry decorating the enum class with strawberry.enum do you mean you are looking for you are waiting an automatic enum registering feature. There is a documentation here to Who's this?
so hopefully this registers this makes it a little clearer i don't think i've really done much in the first in the, in the past two hours i've just been around i've just been mucking around just listening to them do stuff but yeah i guess i'll ask patrick like hi patrick uh currently um yeah my question now is how do i <laughs> How do I uh, change, make a PR to to Strawberry Rocks here? And how do I make it clear or link this documentation over here to uh, to this? Yeah. Hey Patrick, uh, I'm trying to. Seems that we have some users who are still who who might be confused that they have to who it seems that it might not be clear on the documentation that we have to register an enum as a strawberry enum before returning it as a uh, is we have a documentation I think you wrote you wrote a documentation here on the github page but we don't see it easily on strawberry rocks I'm just checking if like the documentation has hints. I mean, I would vote to put it, put that error under the errors page. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see any errors anywhere. Where's the errors, mate? Errors. Oh, dealing with errors. There we are. Okay, um, GraphQL validation error, handend note, execution errors, expected errors. Um, yeah, I don't know. What's this? Guides? Okay, let's try this. Uh, but it's not, it's not under errors. Invisible. Silly phone. In strawberry rocks, is there a way to how do I make a PR such that we can show this enum registering error in, the, in strawberry?
Mm, I don't feel very helpful now. But okay, in the meantime, let's uh, take a look at the list that Patrick gave. Good first issues. So I think um, Hayes is tackling issue 96. So what is issue 96? Add custom return type annotation for subscriptions. Okay, just to recap what are subscriptions again. If I'm not mistaken, subscriptions are used is is um the same subscription in publisher subscribers, where the publishers are the ones that give data and the subscribers are the ones that listens to the data. So if I'm not mistaken, strawberry subscriptions are fields where clients can listen or subscribe to them to these endpoints. And these endpoints are like publishers of data. So GraphQL subscriptions. Okay. Unlike queries, subscriptions are long-lasting operations that can change the result over time. They maintain an active connection to your GraphQL server, enabling the users to push updates to the subscription result. Yep, it's pretty much a publisher-subscriber system. Okay, I think uh, enums. Okay, I guess not necessary then. Okay, I guess I guess Patrick means it should be enough. Strawberry.register in a minute. Yeah. I think there is a way. I think I saw in my in my work code base, but I can't really show it here. So uh I'm trying to figure out a way out to you to get that. I can technically cut this recording and show it, but I'm trying not to avoid that. Uh let's uh ha -ha. So, I think it's under here, strawberry register, register, so, Really? Okay, let's go to enums. Uh, what do they mean? <laughs> what do they mean, sir? Okay, uh, where's this? Uh, yeah, I don't see it. Where's this? Description. Oh, it's a separate... Oh, I was wrong.
Hmm. Yeah, actually, this is yeah. I, I was having a little of a brain fart here. Actually, I realized that this is not really the <laughs> this is not really the documentation that uh is talking about not registering the enum. So I don't think we have a documentation that actually talks about registering the enum at the moment. Right? Is it this one? Oh wait, it's here. Ah, uh, my bad, I was talking about this one. Yeah, let me save this. Ah, okay. <laughs> so I was supposed to remove this one. Okay, I got it. Okay, this is a bit, I mean, this is contribution, <laughs> fixing bugs, but okay, sure, man. Okay, let's, uh, let's create a branch. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, let's, um, move my existing strawberry one. Let's create a fault projects. Move. Oh, this really a fork projects. Move uh, strawberry to fork. Okay, let's clone this one and let's make a PR, a first PR. Okay, clone. Okay. Okay, we have about five hours left. I hope I can <laughs> contribute to something more than this. But okay, let's see what branches do we have. Okay, is the main branch here? Yeah, the main mass main branch is here. So I guess I'll check out the main first. Um oh sorry, I'm supposed to go to strawberry first. Okay. Uh okay, branch. Okay, branch. Check out B. How do we do this? Uh, fix object is not in enum docs. Okay. Okay. So now let's go to the strawberry. Okay. We are. Now let's go to here. Hmm. Okay, fix, uh, remove strawberry type from negative example. Subject is not in enum docs. Oh, let's register this. Grab, uh, should it pair it? Okay, let's register this repository here and let's keep push origin fix object is not an enum docs. Okay, so now, okay, should be parrot. Did I clone this using switch to SSH? Okay. Oh. Yeah, let's just keep remote remove origin. Remote add origin 
I think I accidentally cloned the strawberry one by using HTTPS. That's probably why. Okay, so git push origin fix object. It's not an enum docs. Okay. Okay, permission to strawberry GraphQL denied to this. So how do I how do I do this? Strawberry. Mm. Mm. There we are. Let's clone this one. Okay, in the SSH. Fix docs for not a strawberry. Go on the docs. Errors not a strawberry enum. And we remove this one. Oh. Oh, it's already fixed. in oh it's this one so check out hp fix stocks object is not an enum yep so not the lack of here so okay so okay let's fix this Okay, there we go. Um, let's create a pull issue. 